Okay, real quick, how to wire up a three-phase motor. So first off, we're gonna look at the nameplate really quick. So this is, um, you see, 230 uh, to 460. Okay, this is a three-phase motor. Okay, how do we wire this puppy up? So we're gonna go over here, look at this wiring diagram, okay? So low voltage or high voltage? So you got two voltage choices, 230 or 460. So the high voltage will be this one, and the low voltage will be this one. We're gonna be doing the 230 today, and you'll be able to use these principles to do the high voltage if you need to. So really quick, so you look at, see down here where it says line, and over there it says line, okay? This means that the line connection will connect to the ones that are above it, right? So you have three connections, one, two, three, and you have three lines, one, two, Three. Okay, this is my power that goes into my unit. Okay, so if we look at right here, we have three and nine, and then that is now connected to a line. Okay, so we're gonna go over here and we're gonna look for three and nine. So you see these two right here? We see three, and then on this gray one, you'll see a nine. Very, very, very hard to see, but you can see there's a nine right there. So you see how those two are connected together, right? And they will connect together to one of these line powers, okay? Line power, okay? So that's three and nine. Those are connected. Now next is eight and two. Eight and two. So this one right there, you can see that says eight on the side. And you can see this one right there says two. Okay, so eight and two will connect to a line power. All righty, and now we have one and seven. So one and seven, they are connected together. One and seven, and that will connect to a line power. Now if you wanted to, you could just wire nut all three together, as in like, you know, um, for, for in this example, this is one and seven, one, seven, and line. You could just wire net them all together. You don't have to put these connectors on them. I'm just putting on these connectors because based on how the phases are going to be connected, it will determine the rotation. So I want to see the rotation and then reconnect them as needed. And we're going to go through that in a minute. And now the last thing on the top is six, five, and four. So you can see right here, you got five right there is black, six is purple, and four is yellow. Six, five, and four, all three connected in a wire nut. Okay, that's it. That's how you do it. And now we're gonna connect it up. So just to show you, they're now all connected in those into those phases. See two wires, line one, two wires, line two, two wires, line three and then those three wires are linked up over there okay now obviously if you're going to do the high voltage okay um it's you know instead of doing that uh six five and four together you just do six and nine five and eight four and seven and then you connect three two and one to the line power um so instead of having these two wires connect it's only going to be one line wire if you do the high voltage um but it's the same exact principle um, of that so what we're gonna do now is gonna lay it down and we're gonna see what direction it spins and we want it you see the arrow on there we want it to spin with it right because if you think about this thing it's gonna be facing out this way there's gonna be a pulley on it and it's gonna be pulling you want it to spin in the same direction that you want your airflow going into the unit and down into the store so now we're just gonna test it we're gonna see what way it runs okay so you can see that's the opposite way in which I want it to go so we're gonna just all we're gonna do is we're just gonna take two random ones I'm um, gonna switch them so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this red and white and switch it with this uh, purple and blue we're just gonna switch them Bloop, to there that to there see what happens all right now let's test it again see what happens now you see matches our direction okay so yeah so I'm just gently 
capping in this contactor there with my insulated screwdriver. Um, just for a quick second to test that. So, uh, yep, that's the right direction. So now we're gonna pop it in. Okay, so now that's all hooked up. And uh, you want to always, even though you check the rotation, you wanna verify that it works. You wanna make sure that everything's right. You wanna do some amp draws on it, make sure it's okay. And uh, we're gonna do that right now. So you see that's working good. Working good to go. And we're gonna come over here. I'm gonna take a quick amp draw to see how it's, uh, make sure it's in the, the range. Seven. So you just saw that the amp draw was eight. If you look on the side of the nameplate, which I don't know if I can really get you to see, maybe you see in that. Yeah, there we go. You can see that it says full load amps, and it has um, above it there's the 208, and then the 460 underneath it. It's uh, 5.6 and 2.8. Those are the corresponding running amps that it should be drawing as it's going so we're going to take this sheave and what we're going to do is we're going to wind this out you see how that's sitting in the sheave like uh maybe an eighth of an inch from the top we're going to have it sit further in the sheave which is going to make uh which is going to give us less amperage so you see that sits in there like that so what we're going to do is we're going to turn this physically i can't really show you but you, this physically turns there we go show you see it turns like so and we're just going to turn this a couple times we're going to put it in and we're going to put it down maybe like an eighth of an inch more and just see how it see how it draws okay i just wanted to show this quick so as you can see it's about double the distance into the sheath so now it's like a quarter of an inch to about three eighths of an inch in there so what this does is this, this allows the motor to generate more torque in turning this fan over which will reduce the load on the motor which will reduce the amp draw and uh, also just worth mentioning you want to take like a level put it from the other there and you want to make sure that that's level okay you want to make sure that this isn't cockeyed as it's slanted like this you see how the level would go either way you want it to be on there i just think this is important to include for the whole thing because you want to make sure it runs you don't want to just put it in and walk away yep so now it's going right direction and come over here we got about 5.4 amps that's perfect correct amp draw so there you go that's how you wire up the three phase motor put it in make sure that it's you know pulling the correct amp draw good to go uh yeah um like subscribe over subject how you do it